Is this how your current file management looks like? Well, if yes, I bet you frequently have to search for files. And you know what? That costs time, a lot of time, and certainly it doesn't make you more productive. So let's fix this once and all together so you know at any given time where to find folders and files. I'll show you first how my folder structure looks like and after we will cover the best cloud storage solutions and towards the end of the video I'll show you how to name your files to make them easier searchable. And I will also throw some extra tips in, so make sure to stick to the end. So three years ago my finder looked like this, before I started using my file management system. Fun fact, I just looked it up and it was exactly three years ago that I started using it. I've slightly tweaked it here and there, but the essential structure is still the same. And guess what? After accumulating plenty of files in the past three years, everything is still organized and searchable at any time. So let me show you how it works and how you can start implementing this new system right away. So first of all, this is my overall home folder at level zero, or whatever you want to call this. You may already notice I use Sync as my cloud storage, but more on why a cloud storage is a complete game changer and why I use Sync later in the video. Here I have some folders for each major part of my life. Just some examples, I have documents for all kinds of documents such as bank statements, tax receipts, passport scans, rental agreements and everything I want to keep. Another folder is for my business and contains any company related documents logos, templates, contracts, and so on. So I think you get the point. The idea is to create dedicated folders for the main areas of your life. And in those, again, folders for different things for each area. Also important to say, this home folder can contain any individual files and everything must be organized into folders. This makes sure the system doesn't get messy over time. But let me tell you a bit more about my folder structure. As you can see, first of all, every folder always gets a number. This makes sure they're always in the same order and makes them just easy to access and each folder can have up to 99 subfolders. But for a better overview, I try to keep them at maximum 10. Very important, each of those folders can be five levels deep, not more. Homebase is basically level zero, and then it goes like level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. This makes sure there aren't endless file paths, and important to keep in mind, they don't have to be five levels deep. Always try to keep it as simple as possible. So you can imagine it like a root of a tree. It starts with the big root and then goes into smaller, finer ones. Very recently, I also got a great tip from Jeff Sue's file management video that I implemented right away. So as you can see, the folder 99 is always reserved for an archived folder, which is great because often you have old files you probably never need again, but you still kind of want to keep them. And that's exactly what this folder is for. But here are two top tips that you will find definitely helpful. First of all, I have one folder called This Week, and this is kind of like a temporary storage for all the files that I need this week. This could be, for example, concert ticket, flight tickets, pictures I need to edit, PDFs I currently work with, and so on. Since all those files are just needed once, like for example a ticket, they can be deleted after use. So every week I clean up that folder so it doesn't get messy over time. And this was honestly a real game changer for me because before that, everything always got cluttered up with those kind of files. If you like that tip, definitely make sure to subscribe and give a like. The second folder is a folder called Shared. And as the name says, it's for all the files I want to share with someone. Let's say I want to share some photos from a recent trip with friends but without sharing the entire photo folder of the trip. Now I would simply select the photos and copy them to a new folder in the shared folder. Now I can use the share function and all my friends can access only their photos. With the share function you can further narrow who can access your files. Sync has even a few more advanced options to manage access as you can see. Now this approach can be also used for files, client projects and basically anything else. The main point here is anything that is shared will be always here and will be a copy of the original files. This makes sure I always know what is shared and keeps the original folder clutter free and protected. Then from time to time I simply go here and check if the folder is still needed. If not I can delete it because I know it's just a copy. Okay before we move on to the naming conventions of my files, I quickly want to cover the topic of cloud storage. As mentioned in the beginning, all my files are stored in the cloud. This makes sure that I can access all my files at any given time from literally anywhere. A nice side effect is also that I can access all my files quickly from my smartphone in case I need to. It also makes sure I never lose my files. Even if my MacBook would get lost or stolen, it wouldn't really affect me much because all my files are saved in the cloud. I usually try to avoid storing any files locally, so I never have to worry about doing backups. So if you haven't implemented a cloud storage option yet, I would really encourage you to do so. It just makes everything so much easier and gives you one central place to store your files. 
even if you use multiple computers. Now there are plenty of cloud storage providers out there, such as Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, Sync, and so on. Essentially, it doesn't really matter which one you're using, because in the end, they all do kind of the same thing, storing your files in a cloud. Of course, there are some minor differences in the interface and so on, but honestly, the main point I would look for is simply pricing. Because with time, you accumulate more and more files, and storage that looks cheap in the beginning can quickly get expensive. Personally, I've been using Google Drive in the past, but as I said, it can get quickly expensive if you need a lot of storage. That's why I was recently looking for a better solution that provides more storage at a lower cost. I quickly came across Sync.com, who is also kindly sponsoring today's video. But even if they didn't, I definitely share this with you because you'll be surprised. They have a plan that offers unlimited cloud storage. This is incredible, not that many do that these days. The great thing with unlimited storage is that I don't have to worry about running out of space. I can now store all my documents, photos, but also videos, which I always had to store on separate hard drives. That means I can now also directly share video files with team members or clients without having to separately upload them to the cloud. So unlimited storage is definitely a game changer. I do have Sync's Pro Teams Plus Unlimited plan, which is $15 per month and user. Since this is a team plan, you need to pay at least for three users. So it's $45 per month for unlimited cloud storage and three users. Of course, this might sound a lot, but considering the fact that you get unlimited cloud storage, it's really not that expensive at all. If you compare it, for example, with Google Drive and their Business Plus plan, you only get five terabyte for $22 for one user. So to make it comparable, let's say we get two users means 10 terabyte for $44. Where you get only 10 terabyte and two users with Google Drive, you get unlimited storage for three users with Sync. So definitely a good deal here. And especially when you have multiple team members, it's great to have the option to give them an own account with individual access rights. But let's say you don't need that much storage. Let's also compare that to terabyte plans. With Sync, you only pay $8 per month, whereas you pay $14 with Google Drive. So also here, Sync is simply cheaper. And that's the reason why I switched over to Sync. Also one top tip, if you use the desktop application of Sync, you can turn on cloud files, which means you can see and organize all your files in your finder, but they are actually only saved on the cloud and don't take up any space on your computer. This is an awesome feature because this feels like storing files locally, even if they're saved in the cloud. Okay, let's move on to file naming conventions. This is actually a quite important part because good file names make your files easier searchable. Obviously, there are many ways how you can name your files, and some people even use complex naming conventions like that here. For me, this wasn't really useful because it just makes the whole thing overcomplicated. Let's remember that we always want to keep the system as simple as possible and only as complex as necessary. So I usually differentiate two types of files. The first are files that aren't related to any date. This could be notes, presentations, video files, and so on. Here I always write a descriptive name and include keywords that might be relevant. This allows me to quickly search for them even if I don't remember the exact location. Sometimes it's also useful to add a version name such as v2 or v3 in case there were revisions required. The other file type are files related to a specific date. Important here, we don't always have to include the exact date. Sometimes the year or year plus quarter are already enough. Again, I got this file convention from Jeff Su, so a big shout out here. Let's have a quick look. For some files and documents, the year is already all we need. For example, 2024 YouTube content overview. If you want to find this file now, it's quite easy. I know it was for 2024, so by searching that, it quickly shows up. Some other files might need to be a bit more specific. So here I'd write year plus quarter. For example, 2024 Q3 business revenue. Then we can level more down with year plus month. For example, 2024 02 apartment rent. And if we have to be very specific, we can write year plus month plus day. I often use this for video footage such as 2024-03-04 Lakeview collaboration or also for invoices. So as you can see, the naming convention goes from a wider to a more granular approach. This always depends on each individual file. Overall, a wider name such as year or year plus quarter makes it easier searchable, while a more specific date requires you to know where you saved the file, because mostly we don't remember exact dates. For some file types such as invoices or video files, this is what we want since we usually know where those files are saved and never search for an individual one. Important to note for all of this, as soon as you decide for a naming convention, you have to be consistent with it. It won't work if you name some files 2024 business review and some business review 2025. By sticking to a consistent system, you will do a big favor to your future self. Okay, now here are some additional quick but effective tips. 
First of all, I'd recommend you start leveraging this search feature more. This could be right within your cloud or locally on your computer. On the cloud, you usually have some advanced filter options, which make it quite easy to find files. And especially if you stick to a good naming convention, like mentioned before, you can specifically search for keywords such as presentation or template. If you use a Mac, you can also use an app called Alfred, which allows you to search for everything on your Mac, including apps, files, and so on. So since I'm using the Sync Desktop application to have everything synced on my MacBook, I can now use Alfred to search very effectively. Just hit the keyboard shortcut, hit up a strophe, and type the name of the file. Voila, here it is. Another quick tip, make it a habit to always organize your files right away. If you have a new file, take five seconds to think where it should be stored and just put it there. Files should never be temporarily saved in some random location, even if you tell yourself you'll organize it later. Believe me, you won't. And then your new file management system will quickly get messy. So let's avoid that and organize files right away. And last but not least, I found it useful to have a folder called learning in my base level zero. Here I put all my courses or other resources that are related to learning something. So instead of having them spread over in other folders like finances, business or personal, it's way easier to find them here. Because I know if I want to access anything related to learning, I can find it in this folder without having to go over to other folders and search for it. And it also gives a good overview of what I have purchased or what I should maybe get back to. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope this gave you a good idea of how a good file management system can look like. But again, yours could be totally different. I always recommend try it out and adjust it to your own needs. I'd also love to hear what are your tips for better file management. Let me know down in the comments and definitely don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.